So now I'm very happy to announce the second speaker of the Winter School, Yoshio Tonegawa, who will speak on the process of Okay, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for this very kind of invitation. This is my first time to come to board, and uh, it's, it's great to be here. Uh, maybe I can come back. Uh, so today, uh, and then the next uh, three days, uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, uh, something called gravity law, which is uh, mean curvature law uh, set up in the framework of uh, geometric meta theory. But since I'm aware that you know uh, many of you are not uh, perhaps familiar with GMT, geometric meta theory, um, I will uh, try to make it understandable for people who are not familiar with it. And uh, but besides, even if you are um, only interested in the uh, smooth case, the, uh, the I, I think it's still you can actually uh, uh, benefit a lot from uh, knowing about this. Uh, okay, and the uh, outline of this uh, my course is uh, first to uh, give you the first introduction to the curvature law and uh, also explain uh, some of the tools that comes from geometric military and. Uh, Give you the definition of bracket flow. Uh, in fact, the definition of bracket flow itself, um, I don't think it's uh, never been uh, clear until recent times. And actually, it's not so clear even now, in some sense. Even though this uh, notion is developed uh, or origin, origin from the uh, 70s, uh, it's much less studied by uh, the corresponding sort of static uh, case of a uh, uh, minimal surface. And uh, hopefully uh, this uh, gives you more interest in this uh, subject. Okay, so uh, first let me finish up. Uh, yeah. And also uh, after that, um, I would like to uh, describe the, some of the uh, properties of bracket law and uh, also the uh, regularity uh, theory, which uh, was not really understood until just a few years ago, I'd say. So, uh, okay. so first, uh, the definition of uh, bracket flow. And also, uh, tools from GMT. OK, so uh, now. Uh, when I say i, this is uh, always uh, either zero infinity or some time interval, uh, zero t. And uh, let gamma t be, uh, this is, uh, uh, t is a, this is time, of course, and uh, uh, let this gamma t be a k dimensional. Uh, <coughs> For the moment, you just think it's smooth surfaces. Okay. So gamma t is a time parameterized surfaces, k-dimensional, and uh, uh, this gamma t uh, is a uh, uh, mean curvature flow. If okay, so this is smooth case. If the uh, velocity, this is a normal velocity normal velocity vector is equal to a uh, mean curvature vector of uh, this uh, gamma t at each point in time. Okay, so when, when this is satisfied, we say that gamma t is a mean curvature flow. Okay, so maybe uh, I'll just give you some simple examples. So the simple example is, is first one is a shrinking sphere. Shrinking sphere. Now uh, uh, this is uh, k is equal to uh, n minus one. And uh, let Rt be uh, defined as uh, R0 square minus 2 times n minus 1 uh, t. Okay. 
and that uh, t, t goes from 0 to some number. Now, uh, set gamma t to be uh, just a sphere with this radius. Okay, so this is x and rn. Let's see where I do, uh, x is equal to part t. And the t being uh, moving from 0 to, uh, let's see, until the time that this radius becomes 0. So uh, t, when t goes to zero, uh, this is a, a sphere with radius r zero, and as t increases, you know, this, the radius shrinks until this time where the radius becomes zero. Okay, so this is a, this is a sphere uh, starting with r zero, radius r zero, and then shrinking. Okay, so and. Uh, Note that uh, this is precisely uh, uh, in terms of flow of sphere because uh, the normal velocity of this sphere is, uh, what is this? This is just uh, uh, this times r prime of t. That would be the uh, normal velocity of this shrinking sphere, no normal velocity vector of the shrinking sphere which is, uh, uh, this comes out to be uh, just, uh, uh, I guess you can just see the derivative of this term uh, will be uh, x over x and n minus 1 over rt. Uh, derivative of this with respect to t gives you this. Well, the mean curvature which I, I define this to be uh, the sum of the principal curvature without dividing by the dimension of the sphere of the surface. This would be uh, just a, well, the principal curvature of this sphere would be just like 1 over r, right? So, and then the sum of them would be n minus 1 over r t. Okay? And that, in this case, is uh, there, it's the same. Okay, so that, that uh, so this is shrinking sphere is an example of a mean curvature flow. <coughs> and I notice that of course this this uh, uh, will have a singularity at this time. Okay, it's, uh, the, the sphere collapsed to a point. That's, that's I, I you think that as a uh, singularity. And example two is the uh, uh, graph case. If when the surface is uh, represented as a graph, okay, and uh, suppose that uh, gamma t is, is a graph over some domain, okay. uh, let's go uh, f of x1, x minus 1 t, where um, Let's see, x1, xn minus 1, uh, you know, is, is a set point in. Okay, something like this. If, if the gamma t is represented as a graph uh, for, uh, like this, okay, where f is a function, then uh, what is this? Uh, in this case, uh, for this graph, the unit normal. Uh, which I call new would be just uh, this one plus another u, another x square. Uh, let's see, this would be uh, minus x one minus x minus one and uh, one. Okay, so that's just unit normal. And then uh, now the normal velocity v would be just uh, uh, okay. So the velocity where this graph moves would be uh, time derivative of this f. But uh, since you are looking at normal direction, you have to project this to uh, you have to you can actually check that this comes out to be this f. Uh, this is t derivative, okay, times nu. 
that would be the uh, normal velocity of this moving surface. And the mean curvature of this graph would be, is just, uh, uh, this would be a divergence of number f plus gradient f graph times mu. That, that comes out to be a uh, mean curvature uh, vector for this surface. So uh, this being equal to this gives you, uh, so this e gamma t equal to h gamma t, it gives you uh, this equal to this, and of course the new, new is the same, so this part uh, going to be the same. So um, that gives you just f t is equal to 1 plus number f square divergence of number f 1 plus gradient f. So that, that would be, uh, in, in the case of graph, uh, the mean curvature flow is represented by this second order PV. Okay. Now, uh, you can write the right hand side as um, just a Laplacian of F minus fxi fxj 1 plus k x square. Um, <coughs> so can that be this? fxi xj. If you uh, just compute the divergence of that, uh, this is this inside. And uh, if you um, think that uh, well, uh, if, if, if you're looking at the place where the gradient f is very small, okay, uh, so you know, this, since this is geometric evolution, you can always take out some term suitable uh, uh, plane from which you can write this so, you know, PDE. Uh, then, of course, this would be roughly uh, the flash and the f, okay, because this is quadratic in gradient. Okay, so this, you can think this is a sort of small term, so you are left only with this. So uh, as you can see from this PDE, this mean curvature flow is really like a heat equation. Uh, F T is equal to like that. Yeah. So uh, mean curvature flow is really, is really like a geometric uh, heat, heat equation. Yeah. Uh, from this PDE. Um, now, the third example is um, rather a uh, sort of uh, obvious one, but uh, when the velocity is equal to zero, which means, well, if it's mean curvature flow, of course, this is equal to mean curvature vector. So, uh, if, if, you are, if you are, mean curvature flow is not moving at all, uh, that means, of course, the mean curvature is e e equal to zero. So, in this case, uh, this is, of course, a minimal surface. So in some sense, the study of mean coverage law has to somehow include the minimal surface as a sort of special case. Okay, so this, this is uh, somehow the theory that's inclusive of a minimal surface theory. Okay, um, so uh, in some sense, you can't really expect anything better than minimal surface when you're studying mean curvature flow. So it's a, it's a good thing to always think about the minimal surface when you're studying mean curvature flow because you, know, you can't do better in some sense than uh, minimal surface. But, but at the same time, I, the way I feel about this mean curvature flow studying this for many years is that you actually really get a very different perspective about the minimal surface even you know, studying this mean, mean curvature flow because you, you end up having some sort of new uh, estimates or new kind of um, a way of approaching the uh, minimal surface even even though uh, uh, what you're looking at is, is, a, uh, is a moving object. Okay, um, now uh, let me uh, describe a bit of uh, some notations and uh, tell you about some uh, tools from ge geometry. Uh, 
Uh, but by the way, so if you're not familiar with uh, GMT, uh, you can just think, you can forget about this GMT, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and uh, you can always think everything is smooth. Okay. And even with that, you don't lose much. <laughs> I mean, the fact that you can use this GMT tool is that you can actually uh, 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 treat more general objects, but uh, yeah, if you're not familiar with it, then just forget it. <laughs> because uh, but you, you, I think uh, sometimes it's, it's very difficult to understand. Now, uh, when I write HK, uh, this always means uh, k-dimensional household measure. But um, in, uh, uh, yeah, in RN. But if you're not familiar with this uh, uh, k-dimensional house of measure, just please think about these two cases. That so when I say h1, uh, this of gamma, where gamma is a curve, then this is, um, is equal to just the length of gamma. Okay, so one dimensional house of measure just gives you just the length of whatever curve you give. They, they, this curve doesn't have to be actually regular, but, but just if, you, if you're not familiar, then just think this as smooth things. And, uh, when, and uh, H2 would be where this uh, gamma is a surface, two-dimensional surface. This would be um, just a surface area. Of uh, gamma. Okay, so uh, and these two two examples are the one that you might want to just think of just for any, any you know situation, just one D case, two D case. That's just about enough. Okay, okay so um, now first a uh, fact I'd like to tell you uh, uh, is about mean is that uh, uh, yeah uh, now suppose that gamma t is just a smooth family of smooth family of surfaces. Not necessarily uh, mean curvature flow, just any smooth family. <coughs> then uh, this formula I, I just tell you, um, and I hope that this um, is not that at all. The, if you measure the surface area of this gamma t, so this is just a k-dimensional surface area of this nice surface. Uh, if you just take a derivative with respect to this parameter t, which I take it as a time, more or less, then uh, this comes out to be, just for general smooth family of surface, this comes out to be minus of gamma t of the normal velocity of the, you know, this surface times mean curvature. Okay? This is something that uh, you may think as a so the first variation from that of the area. Okay, so this this I, I hope this is fine with everybody. Okay, so you see uh, this is really like mean curvature is really um, the so the first variation really, uh, of, of this area. So this is uh, I, it's fine. And uh, in fact, just to um, make sure for graph case, for example. Of graph. Um, let's see. So this the graph case would be the D, D of gamma t. I'm sorry. Let's see. N minus one of the graph would be just nothing but as we are familiar with. Uh, let's see. One plus unit of square. Okay, so that's that's the area of the graph over the domain U. Uh, okay, now this we can just uh, compute this, and this comes out to be um, just uh, just differentiating this with respect to t would be one plus another f square of another f plus another f t. Right? This is uh, just a differentiating 
this quantity with respect to t with gives you this. This is number f dot number f and t derivative here. Now, if you do integration by part, then assuming that, for example, um, f is fixed, f is fixed on the boundary of u, okay, then integration by parts uh, gives you no boundary contribution. That would be minus of um, divergence of number f, 1 plus 3 x square. Uh, okay, so differentiating this number f is thrown to the other side gives you this divergence times ft. That's just integration by parts and no you know, contribution from boundary. And this is uh, precisely uh, integration uh, that's just minus of, well, uh, dividing this by, uh, let's see, yeah, dividing this by 1 plus number f. Well, no, sorry, I guess. Yeah, dividing this by 1 plus number x square and then multiplying 1 plus number x square. Okay, if you like this thing, you notice that this is a normal derivative, normal velocity, and here's a mean curvature and integration. So this comes out to be this. Okay, H T. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this. Uh, the time period of this comes out to be exactly this. Okay, so uh, that this one I, I hope this is fine. Okay. That. Now for mean curvature flow, so for mean curvature flow, of course the velocity uh, is going to be mean curvature like that. So uh, this means that uh, DDT of the area is equal to minus of H T H gamma T squared. Okay. This formula holds for mean curvature flow. Okay. So I just uh, plug in velocity equal to mean curvature. And of course this is uh, minus of the positive quantity, so this is less than equal to zero. And of course, this is equal to zero, and if and only if the mean curvature of the is equal to zero. So from this, uh, you note that, uh, that this is a character of the mean curvature flow is that uh, so character of mean curvature flow is is um, is um, so suddenly this tells you that the mean curvature flow is a major decreasing flow. It's more like a gradient flow of the uh, area, major decreasing. is one thing. And also, um, but at the same time, as you saw this shrinking sphere example, you typically have some similarity. Even if you start out with something smooth, in finite time, typically you develop some similarity. That's, that's uh, the uh, property character of the mean curvature law, the of singularity. Okay, and um, and also, uh, in fact, um, you can actually have a notion of mean curvature flow which moves with singularity also. Okay, so that that's a kind of uh, thing that I'd like to talk about next, but uh, can uh, formulate, so formulate a weak solution in some sense, which moves with singularity. You mean with singularity? Character of mean curvature flow is really like this measure decreasing and uh, develop singularities. And uh, so the last part is you can actually have a solution which um, can move with singularity. And this is uh, roughly, um, I'm going to talk about this is bracket, the notion of bracket. Okay. Yeah, and uh, let's.
let's see. So this bracket law is, um, I think, developed. Uh, the, the, the original idea of this bracket law was developed by Bracket, who was a student of uh, Alan Grant, uh, I guess, in the 70s. And this is very famous book by Bracket um, that published from Princeton University Press, and uh, that's appeared in 78. And that's supposed to be his PhD thesis, which is very impressive, actually, if you look at the content. But, uh, but this book, was, I, I think, in my view, it was never really well understood, I think. Um, and uh, so recently, I, I feel that that's now uh, well understood. But um, I think uh, it's not widely understood yet. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, this lecture gives you some uh, understanding of this also. Let's erase this. I said, as I said, the definition of bracket law itself is not really, um, let's say, it's not so clear. I mean, I, I give you the definition of suddenly during this lecture, but that is not the definition. I, I think there could be other definitions. Um, or I would say it's, it's more like a framework rather than definition, but. Um, Okay, uh, let's see, so a few more things. So what is the bracket law? So the idea of bracket law is, uh, first of all, the rough idea first is, the, is that instead of looking at the uh, surface, uh, you think about actually surface measure uh, instead of surface. Uh, <laughs> okay. so, I want this gamma t, but actually, rather than looking at this gamma t, the, the idea of bracket law is to think, to think about the measure that obviously is defined by this gamma t. So this, this is a surface measure, k-dimensional surface measure on gamma t. Okay, so when I write this, uh, okay, maybe I should. Um, I, yeah, notation is that when I... I'm going to write like this. Or A is nothing but just uh, HK intersection gamma okay. T. So instead of looking at the uh, surface, I, I think of, you think about the surface measure. So you, you, you'll be looking at the evolution of measure, surface measure. That's a point of view first. And um, let's see. So um, what I do is, um, so I, I, oh, typically I would write this as a gamma, uh, sorry, mu t. Okay, so mu, mu t is really, uh, in the back of the mind, this is really hk restricted to gamma t. Okay. So I, I, instead of looking at the surface, I, I think about the evolution of measure. But which is really a surface measure. Now, to know about measure, all you need to know is really, so to understand this mu t, which is really this, okay, uh, of course you need to know, what you need to know is for any uh, c uh, continuous function, if you know how you integrate this measure, uh, which is, uh, let's see, uh, this integration of phi, this measure, which is really nothing but just uh, 
integration of phi. Okay. You know, to understand the measure, all you need to know is how, what, what, to understand the value of the, um, this, this integration, right? and like, like these representations, right? you, you know, all the information about measure is included, as long as you know how you integrate, you know, continuous function. Right? So I just don't want to know about, you know, when you plug in some continuous function, if you get some value, and if you know all about what you get, then uh, you, you have all the information about this measure. So, um, let's see. So, now, um, let me describe you. So, so, from this point of view, uh, now, just think about the following. Let this be to be a smooth, smooth surface. Smooth family. Okay, let this be uh, just any smooth family, not necessarily in at all. Now, um, take any uh, com well here. I, I want to I want to have the C one function and uh, well, with compact support, which is um, takes x and t. Okay, so x and t as a variable. Now compute this quantity phi of x t x. Okay. So I integrate. Okay. So this phi behaves more like a test function. So you know, I'm trying to give you a weak formulation of mean curvature law now. Now I take phi to be a test function. See what it does. Okay. Now. This differentiation uh, is equal to, well, this is the formula I give you. This is going to be equal to uh, the following, number p, number of phi minus phi h gamma t dot p gamma t plus um, p phi t. t. Okay, so that's the formula for any smooth family, not necessarily in coverage for any, any smoothly moving surface satisfy this. Uh, now let's see why this is so. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, if phi is equal to one, uh, then this is nothing but what we had before there. If phi is equal to one, you don't have this term, you have only minus h dot t, right, which you see there, is actually the same formula, if phi is equal to 1. Okay. Now, if phi is a function, not necessarily constant, uh, the first term is nothing but just the directional derivative of, you know, phi in the direction of the motion. You see, number of phi dot the velocity, right? So that's, that's the first term, is number of phi dot v. The direction derivative, and the second term is is the change of the area element in some sense. Okay, so that's minus phi h dot p, which really is like that, except that you have phi. And also, uh, since you have t, you have to differentiate this t also, and that gives you this last one. It's clear. Oh, this is fine. <laughs> so this is true for anything, any uh, surface. I want to use this uh, later, so let me call this one. Equation one. Right. Now uh, this one being phi, uh, and also if okay, so if if this is a mean coverage of law. Ah uh, yes. So sometimes people combine this angle with the gradient in the spatial are together and oh, yes. identify a, a convective derivative. Right. Like Here, yeah, yes. Here is just uh, yeah space derivative, but oh, you are saying that the, the time. Yeah, combining the gradient with the normal velocity and the time derivative together. That's ah, okay, okay. Derivative. Right, right. You can think that way too. Yeah, yeah. If you like. yes, that's true. 
Right. I guess so. Yeah. But is that fine? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Now, it's a, if it's a mean counter flow, then this a, B becomes H, of course. So this comes out to be, of course, gamma T, number of phi minus H, gamma T dot H, gamma T plus B phi B T. That's fine. If it's mean counter flow, this is true for any test function. Okay, so that, that's uh, fine. Now, I'd like to claim the point. Uh, so this is somewhat important step to get to black equal claim. Is that um, now smooth, smooth uh, family is uh, gamma t uh, is, is mean curvature flow if and only if uh, if and only if that um, for any a non-negative, here is important, it's, now I'm talking about non-negative function. Okay, so just to be non-negative, I, I, I write this way. Okay, so this is a, a test function, but non-negative. Okay, taking the, its value less, bigger than or equal to zero. For any non-negative function, uh, we have the form of gamma t of phi. It's less, <laughs> yes. so the important that here is a less than equal to, less than equal to, um, <coughs> gamma p, number of i, dot h, dot h, plus p, plus h. I use this quite often, so let me put the number two. This. Okay, so that's a claim. So um, the claim is that a smooth family uh, gamma t is mean countable if and only if this inequality holds for non negative function. Okay, that's also important. It's a non negative function. Um, now, you saw. The one side uh, is true, and that is, if it's a mean curvature flow, uh, this is equal, you know, as we saw here. But the claim, of course, the, the sorry, more material part is going the other way around. That is, if you have this inequality for all non-negative test function, then actually that's the mean curvature flow. And the reason that you want to have this inequality, is there are various reasons, in fact, which I, I don't explain. Uh, later, but uh, for the moment, let me just continue uh, with this. So, why is this so? Uh, the proof. Well, I didn't have so many proofs, but here is a sort of complete proof. So, that's uh, proving this side, of course. Um, the other side is clear now. Okay, so why is this so? And this, this is very important for, and for, for the weak formulation of this mean curvature flow. Now, um, let's see. So, um, now, I'm assuming this two, yeah? So, assume two is true, two holes. So, we want to prove that the velocity is equal to mean curvature vector. Um, now, so uh, note that first of all, uh, we have already this inequality. This inequality, this is has to be equal to this always. Okay. So for any, we, we already know we have number one. Okay. That is this part. This is equal to this. This true for any smooth family. So number one holds, and I'm assuming number two. So uh, I can just okay now notice that uh, okay so this is true. Now this part and this guy is the same, and also this guy has, uh, is the same after all. So uh, you can subtract them. You can subtract one and two. So you look at one. Let's see, two minus one, maybe two minus one gives. Um, 2 minus 1 gives you 
You see, this quantity is the same. Right. So, so it doesn't matter if it's a mean Gaussian flow or not. So, uh, if you subtract them, uh, what you have is, uh, of course, you end up having just this is they they, they are different. They might be different. So, uh, um, you end up having uh, zero is less than equal to. Um, Gamma t of number of phi minus phi gamma t dot let's see h gamma t minus t. That's what we get. Okay. Let me call this number three. I hope that's clear. Yeah, just I'm just subtracted one and two. You know, you get this. And the claim is that you know they are zero. This is what we want to say. So um, so let me write just for shorthand uh, W to be just a this difference. Okay, T minus B of T. And I want to say that what we want is this W is zero. Right. So why this use? And uh, let's see. So uh, okay. So uh, there may be some other way to do it, but I, I like the way I, I do it here. Now uh, let, let me just fix any point. Okay, and some okay, just fix some any arbitrary point. And uh, what we do is um, we look at the following for uh, lambda being positive. Sorry, I, I, I think I'll just do it uh, without this being motivation or anything. <laughs> uh, let me try, try to be a, any arbitrary uh, C1 contract function and positive value. It, it does have to depend on time. Okay, uh, for any phi, um, what we look at is the, um, we just set phi lambda of x to be uh, just uh, this quantity, 1 minus k, phi of x minus x0 divided by that. Okay. They just uh, I define this quantity. And now this function uh, is um, is non-negative function, obviously. Okay, so that I can plug this in. And what I do is I take lambda going to zero. Okay, so I, you, as you see why I'm doing this. Now, um, if you do this, notice that lambda of phi lambda is just a differentiation of x, right? So that the one lambda comes out. So that's minus lambda to minus k, number of phi of x minus x zero divided by lambda. So the one derivative gives you extra lambda division like that. And then you just plug this in. It's not that this is non-negative function, so I can plug it in over there. Now um, because of this contribution. Uh, you know that uh, u3, you get gamma t of um, lambda minus k, lambda phi, okay, x minus x0, divided by lambda, minus uh, lambda 1 minus k, h, k just uh, phi. Let's see, and then x minus x0. Okay, something like this. Times, <coughs> uh, let's see, w is bigger than equal to 0.
Now I, I just uh, divide both sides, uh, both sides by lambda, uh, okay, now multiply by lambda k, both sides. And then take a lambda, I, I say lambda to be to going to zero. change a variable, gamma t is changed to, uh, okay, so this is a sort of a sloppy way of writing this. If you do change a variable, basically, you move x to the origin, x0 to the origin, and then you stretch by one over lambda. Okay, so that's a notation for this. <laughs> and then, uh, well, we have this, this lambda of z, to z uh, number of phi of z minus h of um, x0 plus lambda z um, times uh, lambda times uh, phi of z dot w of, uh, let's see, here is the um, x0 plus uh, lambda z. Let's what you get. This is supposed to be a uh, bigger than zero. Okay, so I hope that this is clear. Uh, after change of variable, you get this. Uh, you see, lambda to minus k, I guess, yeah, cancelled with the uh, uh, volume element of this dimension of measure. Now, note that now you, I let lambda go to zero. Okay, so in such a case, stretching you know, this picture by one of a lambda. Then, um, lambda went down to zero. Then, this, this guy, this one, lambda t minus x zero divided by lambda. What, what happens to this guy? This one is really, uh, when lambda goes to zero, you know, you're stretching gamma t, you move x zero to the origin, and then stretching like this. So if it's smooth surface, this will converge to the tangent space at x0, right, by just stretching like this. And this is the same. Now here, we have this lambda left. So this drops up, right, when lambda goes to 0. So this is gone. And you here, you have just, you know, if lambda goes to 0, this becomes just constant at x0, right? So this, this gives you, um, bigger than equal to zero is equal to number of phi. Now you're integrating over the tangent space dot w at x zero. So actually this is going to be constant, so you can actually take this outside. Dot um, w zero. So that's what you get when you take lambda to go into zero. Now, uh, if you think this uh, tangent space to be uh, just uh, if, 
Let's take this tangent space to be just um, Rk plus zero. Okay, for example, uh, this is going to be just integration on the you know k-dimensional sp space. Integrate, you know, di differentiating and integrate on this plane. Uh, now, this guy has a compact support, right? C1 compact. So actually, the, this term is going to be actually zero on, on the direction of this plane. Yeah. So not that. Not that um, this, in this case, um, x zero and p of p five in x j. is equal to zero for all j one to k. Okay. So it's, if this is k, you know, because the you divide integration by part. Okay. So I uh, note that uh, so the only thing that's left here is just a normal directional component. So uh, so that means, uh, so this gives you um, only that um, J is going to uh, K plus 1 to N of uh, RK plus 0 of uh, phi X J. times uh, W J. That is supposed to be bigger than zero. Okay, so because all the all this uh, all this guy with j one going from go, j going one from to k one to k just becomes zero. So we are only left with this. Now uh, note that this quantity. By choosing, uh, you see, phi has to be non-negative. That's very important. It has to be non-negative. But this quantity itself can be plus or minus, depending on you know what kind of phi you choose. Okay. So this quantity can be plus or minus, or zero if you like. So this means that um, w of x zero has to be equal to zero because it, 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 you see this you can choose this as plus or negative and then you know but this has to be bigger than equal to zero that means this has to be equal to zero. This is j from k plus one to n. Okay, so that means uh, this guy and notice that this quantity is a normal um, vector, right? It's, it's a normal because <laughs> Uh, this W is really, uh, uh, as you remember, that this is mean counter minus the normal velocity, so it has to be normal vector to the surface. Okay, so that means, uh, so not, not that this is, this is a normal vector, which is parallel to, to this angular space. So that means uh, W has to be equal to zero. Um, so, so that means uh, the, so, the, so and this x zero was any arbitrary point. Okay? So this means that the velocity has to be equal to the constant. Okay. And that's that's why that we have this uh, claim. Makes sense. Any question about this? It's, it's fine. Now, uh, why the, the reason that I want to have this inequality, so um, just uh, let me just quickly tell you uh, the reason that we want inequality. Why is that so? Well, the thing is that um, there are many reasons, actually. Uh, well, one is a sort of technical reason that when you want to show the existence of such 
weak solutions. Uh, it's it's some, often the case that you can't actually stick with the equality. Even, you see, when you're constructing the approximate solutions, but that, that's what typically one has to do to have the, some solutions for this mean color flow. Maybe you have an equality when you're looking at the approximate solutions, but when, when you take a limit, because of sudden weak convergence, particularly the weak convergence of the mean curve the square term, somehow you, you end up having inequality. That's somehow the, just like, you won't have equality actually, but you can't, typically. Uh, so from an existence, existence point of view, you can't stay with uh, equality somehow. Yeah. But also, um, this mean counter flow has this property that maybe sometimes at some point you may want to have a situation where the, some, some portion of the surface may just disappear suddenly. Then if that happens, then you can't stay with the equality. Okay? So there are mainly two reasons. Existence and also sort of phenomenologically, you might want to have a situation where you want to have some dis, uh, dis uh, vanishing of the surface. And, uh, so that, that's the reason that you want to have uh, this inequality, at, at least for, for the formulation. So um, now, so, okay. So this is a uh, is uh, this uh, is a uh, one things. But uh, now, in in practice, we want to look at even more uh, weaker formulation uh, by uh, taking a time integral of this inequality, and so. Uh, let me write this as a proposition. Proposition one is that um, okay. So take a time integration of that, and then now, so as a proposition, I, I write this way: a smooth family uh, gamma p is um, mean curvature flow. So um, if and only if if and only if the, um, for any non-negative function, this compact support, this C1, uh, and any T1 and T2, uh, we have um, this, uh, the same thing, but integrated in time. It's less than two. Two minus two, two. 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 and two. Okay. Sorry. So uh, it's, I, I think from what I wrote there, it's, uh, I think you can see that if you take a time integration from T1 to T2, you get this inequality. But if you have this inequality, then you can recover this uh, differential form by just you know, doing uh, obvious things. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. This claim should be true with other import as well. Exactly. But if theory doesn't work, is that correct? Right. Yeah. So yeah, if you can have the other inequality, yes, as you say. But, 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 but can, can you still construct solutions with sort of that definition? Does not work. No, so it doesn't work. Yeah. The other way doesn't work. So. Uh, yeah. That's weird. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's more, I don't know, it's a, it's a, it, it's a one that, yeah, with, with the other inequality, um, yeah, you, you, I think uh, that doesn't work. Really yeah, it's important that you have this minus h squared uh, mm -hmm. that behaves like uh, upper semi-continuously, basically, and then uh, you usually can uh, yeah the other way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's more like that. Maybe it has something to do with entropy and that kind of things. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so um, I hope this is good. So this is, so 
so, but now it became a smooth for me, right? And then uh, I, I'm just giving a sort of weak motivation, uh, with, well, the, the motivation for weak formulation for, for the smooth algebra form. That this is um, uh, the equivalent. Now, okay, so I can use this characterization of the mean Gauss flow to have a weaker solution. And, uh, okay, so notice that this one, all you, what you need here is the, um, now, you know, this gamma t, as long as this gamma t is um, something measurable with respect to k dimension half of measure, at least this line makes sense. And this mean Gauss vector doesn't have to be defined everywhere. But if, if this guy is, in some weak sense, defined almost everywhere, for example, this, this side also makes sense, right? And it doesn't have to be defined for all time either. It has to be defined almost all time for this to, be, to make sense. Right? And with PD also, you do this, this sort of weak formulation for a lot of time. Mm -hmm. but, so this, I, I can take this as sort of weak formulation of the mean character. So now, uh, okay, so from, that, from this point on, uh, if you are now familiar with CMT, uh, I, I, you, you can just stay with smooth glass, but just to um, give you uh, the definition of bracket, well, I have to use a, no, not a language of uh, GMT. Let me uh, introduce some uh, motion from GMT. So, uh, just uh, I can I want to uh, tell you the sort of minimum amount of gene. <laughs> so optimized almost. <laughs> so uh, definition 1.1 1 .1 is that um, now I, I need to write uh, the, the, the definition of this counter area tribal set. So a set gamma um, is is um, is called Count with their spiral uh, now if there is a Lipschitz map Fj uh, going from R K to R N where this J uh, can be uh, countable such that uh, this uh, gamma is covered by the image of this Fj oh, sorry, this union okay So if you have never seen this, um, well, uh, I, I think you can just pretty think this as a C1 surface if you like, but uh, you know, this, this really tells you that um, this gamma can be covered by the image of the, uh, Lipschitz image of the k-dimensional Euclidean space. So this 
So, uh, if, well, so the example of the uh, fetch direct travels, k direct travels set is just uh, k dimensional um, C1 surfaces. It is, um, of course, uh, can be, you, know, you can cover the C1 surface by country number of uh, even C1 map, right? That's fine. And also, the, and, uh, any, uh, any countable union of such set, countable union of C1 k dimensional surface, it's also um, country a rect country k rectifiable. Well, this countable union doesn't have to be disjoint. They can you know, cross the and fall or can do all kinds of crazy things. So this country character set can be quite um, irregular set, if you like. Um, but if you like, you just think this C1 k dimensional surface, if you like, yeah. just, just to avoid any sort of technicality. Now, um, right, okay, so I hope that this is not bad. And also, let me just give you a definition of um, the kind of thing that, uh, that we talk about. Now this, I, I'm not, this complicated travel set is uh, not necessarily uh, measurable, but I, I'd like to consider only the measurable class. Uh, gamma is, uh, if H, gamma is HK measurable, and also um, country carriage travel, And um, it's like this. Uh, yeah. And uh, for any uh, compact set, if uh, k-dimensional measure of this gamma is finite, that is well locally finite measure. Uh, let me let me just uh, write uh, this gamma is. I don't use this notation very much, but just uh, in case. I just say it's uh, gamma is rectifiable with subscript k. Okay? So if this gamma is uh, also HK measurable, country k rectifiable, and a locally finite measure, I just you know, introduce this notation. This is a kind of set I like to research myself. OK, now, uh, so here's the important uh, uh, proposition for this class of set. So this part, um, uh, I hope this is not too bad. I, I hope I, I hope you <laughs> don't get discouraged by this. If you know this, but it's an important uh, property about this class of set. Uh, suppose gamma uh, gamma is like this rectifiable. Then uh, what I'd like to tell you is the following. This is very well known fact about this uh, rectifiable set. Is that for then for for H K almost everywhere, almost everywhere X, there exists a unique uh, k-dimensional subspace. Denoted by uh, let me write this as uh, T X gamma uh, called approximate target space. So that's the name of this. Subspace. With the following property. So uh, what I'm going to claim is that if you are in this class, you know, K-rectifiable, country K-rectifiable, and measurable, and a locally finite measure, then they just have to almost any the uh, tangent space to this set. But it's not a usual tangent space that you're familiar with. So it's a measure theoretic uh, tangent space. 
in the following sense. So, so, um, so I, I don't want to really go into this too much, but um, just I'll give you a quick picture. If you if you multiply, oh sorry, if you ma magnify this set gamma by subtracting x zero and then stretching by one over lambda, uh, then this uh, this approximate term, what this does is that if you restrict yourself to uh, this gamma x lambda, if you restrict your k-dimensional house of measure to this to the stretched set, this converges as a measure uh, to hk of this tangent space. Okay, so as lambda goes to zero. So that, 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 that's what the, uh, this approximate tangent space is. You know, if you if you are talking about a classical tangent space, you know, if you move x zero to the origin and then stretch by one of a lambda, you know, you, you, what you have is you have this nice surface, and you know, if you stretch by one of a lambda, of course, it converges to tangent space, right? If you just say C one surface. So what I'm claiming here is that okay, it's, you don't have that kind of nice property, but at least as a measure it converges to this time space. Okay. So the claim here, which I, I don't give you a proof, but I, I'm hoping that you can take this, is that, is that this is true for almost all points. Is it Tx of gamma, is it linear space? Or? This, yes, yes, this is k-dimensional subspace. Yeah, it's a linear space, yes. Yeah. And this is true for, for almost all points. So idea is really, just to give you some flavor of it, you know, if it's k rectifiable, country k rectifiable, it's after all, it's like a bunch of Lipschitz surfaces. So if you may have some kind of bad point like this crossing point, but this guy you know, has a major zero, basically. And away from these bad points, you have pretty much just a nice piece. Then in this kind of nice piece, at least if you stretch, at least in this weak sense of measure, it converges to some k-dimensional subspace. So that, that's sort of the idea. Okay. So I hope that this uh, you can take it. If, if, if you don't like this, just think gamma to be c1 surface. Okay. So uh, this this may be uh, some 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 of the geometric measure theory kind of things that uh, if you've never seen it, maybe you feel uncomfortable. But if you are, then just please think about c1 surface. Then it's, it's fine. Okay, so I hope this is not too bad. And now, uh, all right, so this is a type of uh, class that I like to think. Okay, so just a remark is a uh, remark is that if, uh, uh, if, if you like, okay, if you like, I just as a record, uh, think gamma to be just C1, okay, C1 k. <laughs> okay, so it is uh, do not worry too much, you just think C1 if you like. <laughs> now uh, I'm going to do a bit more. So just a small question, this convergence of the measures, this is with respect to oh. S functions with compact support? Yeah, yeah. Yes, compact support. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Before you talk about this uh, mean curvature full proposition on the right, so mm -hmm. the, the argument you made before you used S functions which were kind of independent. So at what point do we use test functions which necess necessarily depend on time? time. You, could, you could formulate this perhaps. Without time without dependence. Time. Well, actually, it's important that yeah, yeah, time, time dependence. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. When you do uh, all kinds of analysis, you need time dependence. Yes.
a few more definitions from GMP kind of things. Um, so let's see. What's next, I, I need uh, two more things. Three is that um, now. Uh, now I want to uh, talk about the. Uh, uh, so, in general, I will be talking about just the radomenza instead of the one that comes from the surface measure. So, um, let me just introduce this notation. A radome measure, if you like, you can think of surface measure mu on Rn. I want to introduce uh, this notation. It's called uh, K integral. Integral if the following is true, if there exists a um, uh, k rectifiable set and um, theta, which is a function defined on gamma and taking the uh, natural number, uh, so which is hk measurable function. But it's an integer value, a positive integer value function such that um, this mu is, uh, is just um, theta times uh, house of measure restricted to gamma. Okay, so that is, uh, okay, so I, it, it, maybe this is not so clear. So uh, integration. Uh, uh, is is uh, the following just gamma times phi of x this of x dhk okay so that's what it means so I, I just want to introduce this notation that the measure is called k integral if this uh, measure radon measure is just the k-dimensional house of measure restricted to this k rectifiable set multiplied by this integer value function. Okay, so this set is so-called multiplicity. In the morning class, you saw, you know, you, you saw the language of multiplicity. But it's the same idea here. Theta is, is sort of the number of sheets of this gamma, counting how, how many sheets you have on, on the same uh, piece. So theta is Multiplicity. Okay, and um, so um, and uh, also um, I want to um, introduce this by proposition one point two. Uh, this gamma has a ta approximate tangent space almost everywhere almost everywhere on gamma. Okay, as I said, told you, if it's a, this, I mean, this class of surface, okay, then this guy has a tangent space almost everywhere, or approximate tangent space almost everywhere. And so uh, for later purpose, I, I, I want to define, define uh, the, um, for, for this K integral, integral measure, uh, tangent space of this measure to be defined as uh, defined this to be uh, just a tangent space of this gamma for for almost all x in okay. So um, okay. So now note that uh, if there is just one, you know, if there is equal to one, then you know nothing but just k-dimensional surface measure restricted to this gamma. Okay. But, well, you allow this theta to have a slightly more general object. Because, okay, so rough idea is when you're talking about the mean college goal, sometimes things may become together, and if some two pieces, two surfaces become together, I, can't, I want to count it as two. Okay. okay, so that kind of freedom I need to have a sort of weak notion of mean college goal. So, um, that's my question. 
Yes. What sort of regularity does data have in general? Uh, at the end, right? Uh, or? I mean, what should I be thinking? What should I be? Okay. <laughs> well, you could be thinking of if you are a JMT person, just what I told you, but if not, then C1 surface. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. C1 K dimension surface would be. Yeah, but the, at the end, actually, this mean calculator is going to be uh, almost, well, under some slightly mild con condition, will be actually smooth almost everywhere at the end. Yeah, so, yeah. So you mentioned sudden loss of area before we were discussing that. Both the sides of invasion of the two sheets come together. Yeah. It might be an annihilation of the That's a possibility, yeah, that's a, also a possibility, yes, yes. But it is possible that, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but I need to allow that kind of uh, situation somehow. Yeah. Right, right. And let's see. Okay, so the last piece um, of the, uh, uh, the last piece is the, okay, now I, I need to know, I have this notion of a mean coverage vector. So, uh, just, but before I go there, uh, uh, if, 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 if the gamma is a C2 surface, C2 k dimension surface, then uh, we have this following formula. We have um, the, uh, if you compute the divergence <laughs> of uh, restricted to the tangent space of gamma <laughs> of G, <coughs> this is always equal to minus of gamma of uh, mean curvature dot k for any uh, vector field, C1 vector field. Okay, so this formula holds for uh, any C2 k dimensional surface without value, I should say, without value. Okay, so this is something that uh, for smooth surface this is true. Uh, and also, I, 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 this divergence is the divergence restricted to this surface, right? And then I take this as known. <laughs> and, uh, it's, I, I don't use this name quite often, so let me put this number five. Okay, and then now, um, um, yeah. By the way, this. I often um, identify the tangent space. Okay, so this I want to identify uh, with the um, orthogonal projection map. Orthogonal projection matrix n by n matrix to this tangent space. Okay, so um, okay, so identify this uh, also a projection. Yeah, slightly strange language, so but um, hope that's fine. Um, that is um, T X gamma. I I okay. So this is just k-dimensional subspace, but I want to identify the subspace with a of n by n matrix representing the orthogonal projection to this subspace. So this is Ij, okay, where Ij is from 1 to n. This is, uh, uh, I want to do this quite often. Then the divergence of um, to this, this guy is nothing but just uh, this, in the matrix notation, the Px of gamma of Ij, Gi, Xj. Okay, so that's what this divergence is. It's just a uh, notation. Right? This is what we are. Alright. Um, now the last piece, you, you, because of this motivation, because of this, I want to define the form and also of generalizing the vector. So for k integral that don't measure. Um, 
Vectorfield. H such that uh, this formula is true. Okay, um, the divergence of um, T x mu G C mu is equal to minus of H dot G for all C1 compact vector field. Okay. So if you have such vector field, then H is H is called generalized uh, generalized okay, so omega just keep this mean curvature vector. Okay. For, for mu. So um okay so now I, I define what this k integral radon measure is. That's the you know measure which has this form, really like a surface measure with possible multiplicity. Okay. Now if you have a vector field H which satisfy the analog of this kind of field, then I say that this H is a generalized mean covers a vector for uh, mu. Okay. Now notice that if you if you if you have a okay so let me just write here that if if mu is nothing but just a, a, you know restriction of gamma where gamma is just c two c two surface then of course we have this formula this side this is going to be just a usual mean gamma vector. So this is really like motivated by this you know, relationship. And, um, and so I, I don't know how to, to describe, but this is sort of a weak generalized notion of mean curvature vector, which makes sense for rectifiable set. Notice that here, you see, since it's rectifiable, this divergence makes sense, right? Because this guy exists almost everywhere. Okay, so this divergence Okay, which is really defined here, uh, makes sense. So <coughs> if you have, you, if you can, if you have a, this such vector field, then I, I want, I just say that this is generalized mean curvature vector. Okay. So, uh, you know, it's not that you always have this vector field. Having this vector field actually does require some, a little bit of regularity for this set. But it doesn't have to see two. It could be, Weaker. Okay. I, I don't want to go into how, how, how weak it is, but I, I, this is more like a definition. Okay. And again, if you're not so familiar with it, just you know, don't worry too much, but just think gamma to be C2 surface. And then this generalized mean curvature vector is just a usual mean curvature vector, okay, if you like. Now, <laughs> now I, okay, uh, it's almost time now. Okay, so but I hope I can get to um, this definition of uh, drag is mean covers as well. Alright, ah, and also I, I so I, this guy is going to be, uh, if you have such things, then it's uniquely determined, and I call this uh, as H of mu, okay? So just the definition of H sub mu is just this guy. So the last uh, minute or two, I'm sorry, I think I'm a bit little bit late, but just I finish after finding the definition of bracket law.
So last bit is uh, so the last part is the definition of bracket law is um, a family of um, a door measure. In T, where T is a parameter time, is, uh, is called a bracket flow. Okay, flow. If the following is true, now this is not the um, definitive definition, it's one definition which I think is appropriate. Okay, so there's no, nothing definitive. <coughs> Almost all time, uh, mu t is k integral, and b is the uh, for any compact. So it's uniformly locally finite for any time interval. Uh, the mu t has a finite measure. C is the, um, for almost all time. Uh, this mean generalized mean coverage exists. And moreover, it's L2 integral locally at least. So note that uh, this is the one exactly you saw before, but in a smooth case, here everything is replaced by this generalized object, gives mean, generalized mean coverage vector, which you know this I'm assuming that this exists. Okay. And this is replaced by um, well if this is a surface measure, you have know, exactly the same thing as before. So uh, the one that satisfies all this uh, is, uh, I, I say, it's bracket law. And uh, again, I told you this is not the um, definitive vision, but as, uh, with all my, with my experience, this seems to be the right one. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, the smooth mean coverage flow is a bracket law, as, as you can sort of imagine. And uh, of course, mean or surface is also. And, uh, now, um, and the last bit of definition is that, so um, 1.6 is that if unity has multiplicity theta equal to 1, almost all time, Special class of uh, bracket law where you don't have multiplicity, just 
multiplicity stays one. That's called a unit density variable. Okay. Um, now, uh, just uh, okay. So I'm over time, and um, I'll just finish it. But uh, just uh, one of the things I'd like to explain to you is the uh, is even though this looks like a very weak class of things, well, there's a nice sort of existence result starting from very general sets existing for all time of this class of solutions. Okay, and I, I also relate it to some other like level set approach and um, some diffuse interface uh, models uh, tell you something about it. And the other things I'd like to explain during these four classes is that this actually unit density flow, it turns out to be actually surprisingly smooth. This object unit density bracket flow is almost everywhere and almost all time and it's actually seen thing. Okay. So even though you're defining your, this object by such a you know, weak formation of inequality, you still get a very nice, strong, regular regularity theory. And this regularity theory is really wasn't understood until just a few years ago. OK, so thank you very much. I'm sorry. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, so if you have a unit density bracket theory, and you multiply it by multiplicity theta, mm -hmm. you obtain the bracket flow. Yeah. Can all the bracket flow be obtained this way? We have some bracket flow not derived from the unit density. It's, um, yeah, so it's not so clear, yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. The existence theory is actually very few, I'd say. And uh, there are a lot of questions. That's, yeah. I, I must say, this notion of bracket flow has been around for a long time, but very little is known at this point. Yeah. And I, I really welcome any questions during the lectures, since I'm here. <laughs> so, also probably during the coffee break. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So. Yeah. <laughs> we suggest go for the coffee break, and then we, uh, we should not, I mean, we should start again.